Randy Holmes in his dressing room. The gloves are being put on. He's getting ready to come out to fight Leroy Jones. The situation is exactly the way he would have wanted it to be. He beat Weaver, Weaver Shell Tate. Holmes wants recognition. That's been his theme. That's been his dream. And he's going to get a chance to fulfill it in just a very few moments when he goes against Leroy Jones, a big, fat, blubbery guy, but who is unbeaten. We'll be back. Jack Johnson, Jack Dempsey, Gene Tunney, the incomparable Joe Lewis now sitting in this arena. Muhammad Ali, and for my money, Joe Frazier, too, and Rocky Marciano. And there have been some very forgettable ones, too, like Jess Willard and Primo Conera and Ingemar Johansson and some others. What Larry Holmes would like to prove is that he stands a solid and respectable champion somewhere in there. And there have been reasons to doubt that lately. Let's take a look at Larry Holmes's boxing history. Larry Holmes, the WBC current champion, seeks recognition above all else. And judging by some pretty impressive statistics, he should get it. For instance, he can pass Tommy Burns and Joe Lewis in consecutive knockout heavyweight title defenses. His 33-fight winning streak puts him right up there with some of the very best. In his five title defenses, a total of 43 rounds, he lost only five rounds on all three judges' scorecards. Looking back at his career, he seemed to reach a new peak in his first fight against Ernie Chavez, using the jab and the ring brilliantly. Side to side, lateral movement. He really creamed Chavez, winning virtually every round for the decision. And then, his classic fight. One of the best heavyweight fights ever against Kenny Norton. And the 15th round, one of the most memorable perhaps in boxing history, as the two stood toe to toe and slugged it out with Holmes the winner. Then the defense against Evangelista. Indifferent, of course he knocked the rotund Spaniard out, but was not impressive. The awkward Ocasio, completely outmatched. And Holmes put him away. Then against Mike Weaver, the first sign of perhaps decline in Holmes. This was the 11th round. And look at Holmes, looking over to the corner. Appeared he might be ready to quit. Weaver giving it to him. But suddenly, in desperation, as the round was coming to a close, that uppercut floored Weaver, and Holmes put him away in the very next round. Then the rematch against Shavers just last September. Holmes again fighting brilliantly, winning the first six rounds without trouble. But there, in the seventh round, carelessness, and Shavers floored him. Groggily, Holmes got to his feet, came on to win in the 11th round, but not impressively. Then, against Lorenzo Zanone, this was fifth round action, and incredibly, Zanone was using the jab and winning the round from Larry Holmes. So, some suspicions grew about Holmes' efficiency. In the sixth round, Zanone went down, finally, completely, but Holmes did not impress. So there is the boxing history of Larry Holmes. That's Leroy Jones. That's Leroy Jones, the number two ranked contender. And we'll be talking with him after this word from our local stations. He weighs 254 and a half. Leroy, I want the people to get to know you. South Carolina was the beginning point. How did you become a fighter? Well, uh, I started out in New York City by winning the New York State Golden Glove Championship in 71 and 72. And uh, went to the National AAU, lost to Nick Wells. Then went to the National, uh, went to the Olympic Trials, lost to Dwayne Bobbick there. And then I came back, went back to New York. Then I moved to Denver, Colorado with Bobby Lewis and continued to fight amateur for another year. And then I turned professional. You mentioned Bobby Lewis, your manager, of course. He was our Olympic boxing coach in 72 in Munich. And I remember when, at a press conference, he said, 
that he thought you were the best heavyweight prospect around. That's how you got together with him, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, well, we got together actually after I won the New York State Golden Gloves Championship in 72 by going to Canada. We fought the Canadian, but then we went from there to the National AAU, and then from there we went back to New York and we fought the Irish team, and we've been together ever since. Now, Leroy, in your career, what would you say has been the high point thus far? The easy victory over Mike Weaver? Well, I think the first one was the, uh, the victory over uh, Dino Dennis, and then the follow it with Mike Weaver. And that's been about the highlight of my career you know, this, thus far. Larry Holmes doing a lot of talking about how quickly he'll put you away. Do you think that's all talk, bravado, or do you feel that you're ready for Holmes? Yeah, I feel I'm ready. I feel, you know, Larry's walking around shooting off his mouth trying to gain his self-confidence and, uh, and trying to put some fear in me. Uh, Mike Weaver says he's going to knock me out also. Uh, uh, Dino Den was supposed to knock me out. A lot, of, a lot of guys that I fought were supposed to have knocked me out, but I'm still here. And uh, uh, Monday night, tomorrow night, he'll have to prove that he can knock me out. And uh, I don't believe he can. Simple as that. Much has been made of the amount of weight you carry, even Sadly, a certain amount of ridicule. Does this get to you? Well, a uh, uh, few times, like the last time I fought here, uh, I tried to uh, drop my weight. I, can't, I moved down to uh, 230, and I was very weak. And uh, uh, I was a lot faster, but I was weak. The, my punches had no snap to it, had no power at all. And, uh, and a lot of people, you know, asked me about my weight and uh, they ridiculed me about it. But it doesn't, it doesn't bother me anymore because I know the weight that I'm comfortable at and where I'm the strongest at. And the weight that I am now, I'm the strongest at. And that's what it takes to win, you know. And uh, as long as I win, I, I don't feel that my weight sh should have anything to do with it. I carry my weight good and uh, I look good with it, you know. I look good in the ring and that's all that matters to me. You said at 2.30 you were faster, yet don't you pride yourself, even when you're at 2.50, at how quick your hands and feet are? Yeah, uh, and not only at, you know, 2.50, I'm fast, and I'm punching good. I, you know, uh, like my last fight here, I had a guy with 28 unanswered punches, and he, all he did was laugh at me. So um, uh, now I'm around 2.55, I'm punching good, and... Uh, it's gonna, if that be any knocking out did, it'd be me doing it. So you're absolutely unafraid of Holmes. Uh, well, how, let me say it like this, you know. Uh, in this business, you're not supposed to be afraid. You don't have time to be afraid, afraid you know. I'm, and I'm not afraid of anybody. Uh, you know, he, he bleeds just like I do. He walks on two legs just like I do. And uh, uh, where I'm from, you know, uh, being afraid in New York, if you be afraid, you know. You, you won't even walk the street, so uh, I'm just not afraid of home. He got to make me afraid of him. He got to bring it to me like I'm going to bring it to him and may the best man win. Good luck, Jim. Thank you. As you can see, the fighters are in the ring. Jones to the right of your screen. Holmes bouncing around to the left of your screen. We'll be ready for the WB. This yep. is the main event of the Out evening. to make this rounds of boxing for the World Boxing Council Heavyweight Championship. Introducing, in the blue corner, fighting out of Denver, Colorado, the number two contender undefeated in a professional career, weighing 254 and one half pounds, Big Bad Leroy Jones. Leroy is 30 years of age, six feet five and inches tall, has corner, a reach of 80 inches. Eastern Pennsylvania. The WBC heavyweight champion of the world, weighing 211 pounds, the Eastern Assassin champion, Larry Holmes. Holmes is 30 years of age, weighs 211, appears superbly conditioned. Working with Larry, of course, his trainer manager, Richie Giacchetti, in the corner, the incomparable veteran, Freddie Brown, and Jake Holmes, trainer manager of Leroy Jones as adduced in our talk with him Bobby Lewis the US Olympic boxing coach at Munich in 72 the corner man Joe Teal Frank Mastorano 
The referee is Richard Green. The judges, Charlie Maker, Art Lurie, Dwayne Ford. Maker cast the deciding vote for Alan Mentor over Vito Antifermo in this ring two weeks ago. There's the tail of the tape, the bell, the fight begins. Scoring on a 10-point must system, mandatory eight count, no knockdown limit per round, can't be saved by the bell except in the final round. It is a 20-foot ring. Eight ounce Everlast gloves. I think you'll be surprised by the quickness of Leroy Jones's hands and the agility and mobility he shows with that huge body on surprisingly quick feet. At least that's been the way he's looked when we've seen him in the past, but that quick left jab of Holmes. First to the face, then to the midriff. First round action. The very beginning of things. Jones is not truly a knockout punch. This fight's for you. 500. What's interesting about Holmes as we look back upon the history that we presented is that he got there with constant movement and with the jab. And in his more recent bouts, he has forsaken that movement. We are coming to the two minute point in round one. WBC heavyweight crown at stake. And there you saw Leroy Jones doubling and tripling on his own jab. He likes to use the weight of that body when he has the opportunity to, to lean on the opponent and wear him down in the manner that Tate was doing earlier until Weaver caught up with him. End of round one at hand, an uneventful round. We're back live in Las Vegas, the start of round two. First round, as you saw, the fighters feeling each other out. Larry trying to get through with the left jab, doing it occasionally. Jones himself responding in kind on a couple of occasions. Round two. Got in two good quick lefts. Leroy with a left and a right. Larry's is a stinging left. I think the strength of his punching has been underrated. A minute into the round. Effective use of his jab in this round than Jones. A minute 45 into round two. Let's 
Saw the very neat way Holmes picked off a Jones blow with his right glove. This evening started with two stunning surprises. Eddie Gregory's TKO of Marvin Johnson in the 11th. Mike Weaver's knockout of John Tate at 2.15 of the 15th round. Sugar Ray Leonard held to form. And now Holmes is holding to form. Sugar Ray with a great knockout. 227 of the fourth round over Davy Boy Green. This has been a very good round for Larry Holmes. He's been working the jab effectively, the right in combination occasionally. We approach the end of round two. Live Las Vegas, Nevada, round three. Holmes assuming control of the fight in round two. He has said he will put Jones away within five. He was setting Jones up very well toward that end in round two. Quickness of the jab, quickness of the feet. Looking to parlay that jab, which you just saw with the right, and again, and again. And you saw the pickoff of the Jones blow with the Holmes right glove again. We have gotten a shocking report from Landover, Maryland, that Angelo Dundee was knocked out by a fan as he was leaving the arena after the fight. Our director there, Chet Forty, is on top of the story, and we will report further to you as he gets it to us. Angie in the dressing room right now. Look at those lefts get in there from Holmes. Totally dominating the action. Jones's hands not quick enough to prevent most of them from getting through. Though he does pick off some. Jones got in a good right. On Holmes on the left jaw. Minute left to go. This is the third round. Catch it coming in. Catch it coming in. Holmes at 211. Lean and trim, superbly conditioned. Right there, you saw what Holmes is trying to do. Set Jones up with that left so that he can get in the right. And hopefully, from Holmes's point of view, finish him off within the predicted time. Holmes missing twice. Jones at 254 and a half. And we're approaching the end of round three. That's it. We've just begun round four here in Las Vegas. Larry Holmes. Using that left immediately, as he has been doing so tellingly in the last two rounds. While the stature as contenders of the likes of Evangelista and Ocasio were question was questionable, the fact is that Holmes showed good ability to adjust to different styles, most particularly the crouching awkwardness of Ozzy Ocasio. 
It was the Holmes fight that brought his reputation into some degree of question. Right there, Jones was hurt by that Holmes left. Slightly off balance as it scored. Leroy Jones, of course, 24-0-1. Never been beaten. his most notable victory over Mike Weaver, who scored the most notable victory of his fighting life earlier this evening in Knoxville, when he KO'd Big John Tate in the 15th round. This is fourth round action. We're almost to the point where we have a minute to go in the round. No suspicion of a knockdown yet. Holmes has learned the lesson. It is not to get callous. Oh, that was a good right hand shot by Jones as he became in the seventh round of the Chavis rematch when Ernie almost put him away. Toe to toe now, along the ropes. Larry got in a good left to the belly while Jones responded with several, but that left to Jones's belly did hurt him. You could see the face half brown in pain. The end of the round is here. Fifth round action live from Las Vegas. Interesting exchange in Jones's corner. Bobby Lewis, his trainer manager, telling him, you're at your best when you're in close. And you've got to keep going to the body the way you started to that last round. Let's see if Jones is able to follow Bobby's instructions. Holmes dominating the fight in my personal scorecard thus far. I scored the first round even. The next three, Holmes easy. <laughs> Fella looks like anything but a fighter. However, with that huge body and with the quickness of the hands, there is an effectiveness there. He may not be so nearly easy to put out as Holmes had been predicting. Jones has not yet gotten in close and he has not yet gone to the belly or tried to. like to alert our stations along the line. We'll have a station break at the end of this round. Barring, of course, a sudden knockout. This was the round that Holmes dedicated to his baby daughter that he said Jones would go in. We've got a minute and three seconds left for Holmes to do it in if he's going to do it. Now Jones works in close, but he's the one doing the holding. BC World Heavyweight Championship at stake. And we'll be 
back with more of the WBC World Heavyweight Championship after this word from our local station. Round six. We're live at ringside in Las Vegas. Again, Bobby Lewis exhorting his charge. You're looping your right hand, he told Jones. And you're not finishing off with your left hook. And you still have yet to go to the belly. But now, Holmes quicker with the hands. Scores with a left and right combination and then doubles and triples on the left jab. Not easy to follow instructions when you don't have the capacity to do it based upon the level of the opposition. Jones is not fighting a statue. We are about a minute into round six. Later report on Angelo Dundee. He is awake. He is stable. He did suffer a very mild concussion. He had been knocked out by a fan. That report from Landover, Merrill. Minute and a half gone in round six. Holmes, as you can see, dominating the flow of the fight, fighting his own fight, being careful. Forgotten was the prediction of the quick knockout. Scored well there. A minute left. Holmes is really leveling Jones now. He's using the right much more frequently and using it well. Six is winding down, and what it's amounting to now is target practice. As Jones's left eye continues to swell, and as perhaps he begins to grow fatigue, Larry scoring it well. There you see it. Is the end of the round. We are into round seven. That left eye of Leroy Jones, above the eye, it's like a huge, angry boil. That's the nature of the swelling. Bobby Lewis complained to referee Richard Green that Holmes was thumbing Jones. I've seen no evidence of that, frankly. It was Holmes who claimed that Weaver thumbed him in their prior fight. We've had some good fighters on this undercard tonight. Alexis Seguea, the super featherweight champion of the world. Fought a tough veteran cookie and fought him brilliantly, won the decision. Tommy Holmes, uh, Tommy Hearns, forgive me, knocked out Santiago Valdez in the first round. Hearns continues to be almost awesome. Seventh round, WBC heavyweight crown at stake, and Larry Holmes having a ball. At this point, I would say the only round that might have been in doubt was the first round, when each fighter was extremely wary. All of the others, I would give to home. In close now, Jones tries to use that 254 and a half pounds to maul home, but it didn't work. Back to ring center. 
And Holmes with the quick hands, steadily beating Jones to the punch. Less than a minute to go. Right by Holmes, then a follow-up left, and another good right. Jones fighting wildly now. Perhaps the first sign of desperation. Look at that. The end of the round. Go down to Knoxville, where our colleague Keith Jackson is with Mike Weaver, who had himself one fight tonight. Well, Howard, I'm not sure it's really seeped into Mike as to what he has accomplished, though the grin breaks out every once in a while. Would you like to see the knockout? Sure, I want to see <laughs> what, I've been, what I didn't see. You know, this is the first time in the annals uh, of heavyweight boxing that anybody has come into the 15th round, had to knock out a man in order to win a championship, and Mike Weaver did it tonight with only 45 seconds remaining in the fight. And here's how it happened, Mike. Yeah, I see. They was telling me about throw the right hand to the body, follow a left hook, and, and I caught him with the, the left hook, which is my best punch, you know. It worked tonight, my man. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go back to Howard in Las Vegas. Thank you, Keith. Congratulations, Mike Weaver. And you just got a glimpse. Look at that left eye of Leroy Jones. Eighth round action here in Vegas. Quickens a third, right in there. Fourth, fifth. A minute into the round, it is the eighth round. and thus a pure target not slipping punches anymore hasn't been for a long number of rounds only in the first round Kenny Norton made an interesting comment to me earlier. He is in the arena. He said, Holmes's problem is he's without stimulus, without incentive. He's so much better than all of the others around. now. Jones a wide open target. Jones ready it seems to go. A little bit wobbly. 20 seconds left in round eight. And Larry throwing everything he could into it. Give Jones credit for gameness. He tries to fight back. But his body is just falling into the corner directly above us. 
and they're stopping the fight. And it's a good thing that Richard Green did. One has to be concerned about fighters in the wake of four recent deaths. He is completely pooped, bagged out. Jones's face tells it all. It was 256 in the eighth round. And Larry Holmes remains the WBC heavyweight champion of the world in a fight that from the first round on was no contest. Look at it again. That left hook, and that left hook, and that right, and that right. And now, Jones's huge body just falling back into his own corner. And Green into seat. Larry being sponged off by Richie Giacchetti. And he'll be coming down to talk with us in just a moment. And there is the beaten warrior. And we'll be back to talk with Larry Holmes here in Las Vegas in just a moment. Here he is, the winner, still a WBC heavyweight champion. You had said you'd finish him off in five. He wasn't that easy to finish off. I couldn't finish him off in five. Leroy know how to survive. That's a little poem for Molly. You certainly fought it your way and most easily. Yeah, well, Leroy is strong. He's a little stronger than I expected. He hit me in the third round, Howard. My ears still ringing. That he, right? Yeah. He got you with that wide right. Yeah, and he's, he's a little stronger than I anticipated. But I think I proved myself once again to the people all over the world. Six title defense, six knockouts. I'm going for Joe Louis' record, seven knockouts while he held the title. And Tommy Burns at eight. And Tommy Hearns at eight. Burns, I'm talking Burns. about Hearns. But I'm going for, they say, the greatest heavyweight of all time. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Off what you saw happen to John Tate tonight, what are your plans? We'll I'm fighting again in May or June. Yeah, I hope on ABC. Will you fight Weaver again? Weaver, yes, yes. Weaver has proven himself. He's the champion of that side, uh, so-called champion. But I think the people know mm -hmm. who the real champion is, Howard. I don't know what I have to do to prove to people that All right. Larry Holmes is a champion. All right, Larry. Right, Mom? This is the finish of the fight. His body falling into that Enough. corner again and again and again. And you giving him everything uppercut. you had. You Strong. started to use the uppercut from the sixth round on. Ernie More Shavers. effectively. Ernie Shavers. I went back to Ernie Shavers. But Blue is strong. And I'm just happy that I was blessed to win again. I know my Reverend Jacobs was praying for me in all the Second Baptist Church, and I know without them, or without God, Larry Holmes would not be the heavyweight champion of the world. That was Leroy we were just looking at, his disappointment written across his face. I think every fighter that goes in and gives the best shot for the, for the crown, I don't feel that they should be disappointed. But they have to realize they're fighting the best heavyweight in the world. I don't compare myself with the other greatest. I just want to be Larry Holmes, Howard. A fighting champion, a people champion, and your friend. Glock, staking his claim to greatness as he destroyed the balding legend, Benny Leonard. Twice in the 30s, McLaughlin held the title. After that, the human buzzsaw, Hurricane Henry Armstrong, winning the title, defeating the great boxing slicker, Bonnie Ross. Armstrong held three titles at one time, defended successfully 20 times. And then the incomparable one, Sugar Ray Robinson. This was his last fight as a welterweight, unbeaten, he moved on up. That one, he destroyed Charlie Fusari. Then Kid Gavilan won the title, giving that beating to Johnny Bratton. Oh, they were great fighters in those days, but never in the history of the welterweights have there been so many great ones. This